Welcome back. Second hour of the program. I would say this, a record amount here at the Sport Entertainment Network in an hour of calls. It absolutely melted down. So we're pressing pause on that. We're going to just get struck into a bit of content. Plenty of text messages as well. It is a run home with Joel and Fletch today. Philpy in the chair. Hyundai Tucson tomorrow's SUV. Book a test drive and anytime fitness a gym for anybody Anytime. And the New Zealand audience, by the way, they join us for the first time for this afternoon. Monday to Thursday, you'll hear us here from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., your local time in New Zealand. But if you have missed the first hour, the podcast ready for you. This bloke here is ready to go. I tested him out, Philby, the other day. Yeah, what did I, you I, I thought it might be – I thought he can't be real. So I challenged him over hour after hour after hour where I'd throw a topic at him. And, and sure enough, there was a story behind it. I thought it must be rehearsed. It must be something there. But sure enough, he had the answer for every question I threw at him. And I'm pleased to say, Matty Johns, thanks to Chemist Warehouse. And right now, you can get 40% off everyday low price of healthy care vitamins at Chemist Warehouse. Matthew Johns on the air. Hello, mate. Uh, sugar, filthy. <laughs> How are you, lads? Legend. Oh, much better than Saturday morning, Matthew. I can tell you that much. How are you? Oh, oh. <laughs> Mate, it was uh, yeah, it was rough. It, it was it was rough. But you know what? I picked myself up, Joel, yep. and mate, just basically poisoned myself again. Just yeah. again, mate. Just keep going. <laughs> it's the only way. So, Philby, we had a bit of a staff drink thing anyway. Yeah. Next day, and I've been drinking a lot the last sort of six months. So I had to get the train in to get my car, which was sixteen hours overdue. I paid for three hours parking, and I thought I was doing it tough. I'm on the train. <laughs> And I'm on the train for about half an hour. I can't look at my phone because my phone's about to die, so I need it for the parking. So I'm just bored there, and every minute's taking about three hours. And I'm feeling really solemn about the whole thing until I get to Mortdale. And this fellow jumps on from Mortdale, and he sits next to me, says nothing for five minutes. And then after about five minutes, he nudges me. And he says, excuse me, mate. I said, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. Do you know what day it is? <laughs> Mate. At that point, I felt good. <laughs> to, well, the, I have I have a friend, and he was he, he had some problems there for a while. Let's put it that yeah, he had yeah, some problems. Yeah, yeah. He had some issues. Yeah. Anyway, he um, anyway. So anyway, he jumped on a. Uh, he used to black out for days. Yeah. Okay, he'd go on these horrible benders, oh, and no. literally just there'd be, yeah. You know, he he couldn't remember three or four days. He go that hard so he tells about the worst experience that he had that, that convinced him that it was time to sort of go clean was that he come out of his haze and he was walking through an airport turned to the person next to him and said where am i and he was in charles de gaulle airport in paris oh, oh, wow <laughs> no. and had and literally had no idea how he got there how he got on the plane <laughs> how he got through customs all of that. And, uh, yeah, after that little episode, he went, you know what? I think I might just <laughs> go and seek a little bit of treatment. When, oh. you, when you said friend, you meant brother, right? Is that Yeah. <laughs> is that... <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's not go there. Oh. It's a little bit testy no, at the moment. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, he's on tomorrow. We're looking forward to that. Now, Philby, we, um, why, why do we do it? Like, What we, do you mean? We've, like... be, we've been on this earth for so long. Yeah. Why do we do it? Like, why do we put fun. ourselves in that scenario? Yeah, but why? It's... We We know what's happening tomorrow. Why do we keep doing it? Yeah, it's a thrill seek, isn't it? It's like a boozy version of the Amazing Race. You just yeah. go, I'm just going to, this this will be funny. I know I shouldn't oh. do it. It's going to hurt the next day. Um, but, yeah, mate. A lot of those people tend to come into the Matty John Show audience. Yeah, uh, they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Mate, they were there. They were, we had a group last week that were trying to order cartons of beer into the studio. I said, uh, boy, Jimmy come Brings. on. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, on that topic of turning up at airports and not knowing where you were, I had a mate who had a revelation of a life experience like that where he was like, maybe this time to change. He went to the SCG to watch a cricket and the cricket finished and he was like, I'm having a great time. You know what I'm doing? He had a, he goes, the cricket's on tomorrow at the Adelaide Oval. He just went straight to the airport and no. booked oh, a flight, wow. went to Adelaide, got to Adelaide, ripped in Deluxe, woke up, went to the Adelaide Oval. It was a bit weird. There was many crowds around. And he's like, what's the story here? And they go, mate, the cricket today's in Perth. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Matty, uh, Matty, what's the famous story around, uh, is it uh, Bumble, Lloyd, uh, David Lloyd? He's the English cricketer. And he'd come out for the Ashes. And so it's quite a custom. You, you, day one, you'd have a few after that. And he, he got a bit too carried away. He went, oh, dear. He looked at the clock and he said, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, I've got to get back to the hotel. So he rushes out of the bar, rushes out at the front of the hotel, and there's a taxi waiting there. He said, sir, you've got to get me to the 
um, Sheridan Maroon, whatever it is. Yep. And he said, jump in the back, throw your seatbelt on. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, sir, you're here. <laughs> it's $4.30. <laughs> oh, that's good. He'd done the whole full circle. He had no oh, idea that he'd made himself that's... back. Yeah. Matty, we, we need to talk state of yep. origin now. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. R- Ruben yes. caught a man of the match. I, awesome. I, he was awesome, but I, I, I just don't – when we were calling the game, two try assists from Reese Walsh on debut, yeah, yeah. flawless out the back – the try assist, which no one's really talking about. Reese Walsh, where he's Incredible. beyond the far post on James Tedesco. Surely he had the most influence on the game, didn't he? Possibly. Possibly, Joel. I, I watched the game again this morning and second look, and he was incredible, Cotter. Man, just every run, he was piercing the line, made it, some of his desperation defence, coming up with loose balls. He was amazing. It was the things, like a lot of those players, the things you don't see. Mm. You know, it's just, he, he was he was tireless. And that's the thing about it, like, you, you rattle off the, I mean, Hamaso, mate. Like, I, I was really, like, I was really shocked when they didn't pick Gagai. Right? But every risk, if you want to call it a risk, I suppose it was, that Billy made... He he, he he was correct with, and and some of those risks as well, as well weren't just you know Reese Walsh at the back and, and the hammer in the centres. It was things like mate Tulangi hasn't hasn't had a good season, has been out of form. You know Cotter hasn't been quite you know him himself not not the standard we're used to. Selwyn Cobbo they said was a big risk, and yet. All of those players fired. In fact, I, the, if you look at the Queensland side, I can't name a player who didn't play to his potential. Each player rewarded Billy for selecting them. Whereas New South Wales, if you have a look at the game, there's probably three, maybe four players that played to potential. Liam Martin, uh, Frizzell, I thought yeah, was strong. Was Ta'o, was, Outstanding Ta'o was good, and I thought Crichton was good. Yep. Right? I missed a tackle, I understood, you missed that tackle on Selwyn. But I thought he he was good, but that's what really it split the sides is the fact that those players, um, all of those Queensland players, you know, met it met the expectations that Billy Way picked them, and some of them I think exceeded it. The big play it was a massive play. Tommy Turbo goes down, and that's exactly where and Matty, you having played in the halves your whole career. Nico Hines, for that particular play, he's been playing on the right-hand side all year, but he defended yeah. that play as a half, didn't he? And, and you can understand why. It's, it's we're, we're creatures hard, of habits. Yeah. So he collapsed in. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's so. It's just so hard. This is, And like one of the big talking points going into the game, Joel, was going to be how do they, how do they use Nico? Because I was having a look. Unless a player was having a shocker and got hooked or yep. got injured in the spine, I was just going, I don't know where he goes. And they'll talk about him playing a dummy half. I just didn't see that. And then he got his got his go with, with Tommy. And it's just, you know, when you pick a guy, you know, he's been playing in the halves all season, defending three, three in or maybe four in, and yep. to throw him out there, it's just it's very, very difficult. Um, and there's some, you know, I'm not expecting mass changes, but there's some decisions for, for Freddie to make. You know, it's, um, you know, the, I mean, we, like the Nico one's a perfect one. Okay, right, well, what do you do now with Nico, right? You've picked him, you know he's good enough. Do you put him in the sixth jersey, a jersey or do you leave Jerome there? And if you're leaving Jerome there, then what do you do with Nico? Do you keep him at 14? Or, is there, or do you go with Cook? Or do you go with Cody? So there's lots of little, there's lots of decisions that Freddie, I think, has got to make there. Um, you know, and, you, and you've got Latrell returning, of course. Just all those little nuances that'll make a big difference to the side. Um, you know, that I, I, you know, Freddie has gone into this series under pressure, and and you can see that. But mate, I di- I really respect the fact that he took a risk with Tavita, putting him in the side. I thought that showed a lot of bravery, but that didn't work. No. So I don't know, you know, how what a, uh, how long Jake Travoyevich has got till he's back, but it'd be unlikely that he'd be in. So. Yeah, there's some decisions to make there, no doubt, boys. Just on the Nico thing, and this was a big outcry before the game, and I never got around it um, as far as him being the 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 five eight. And the reason I say that, Matty, is in many ways the very very best for Nico Hines is almost playing the same role as Cleary. He's a right sided mm-hmm. defender. He's the pied piper of the team, and he runs the show as he likes. Yeah. To throw him on the left hand side is a huge gamble. You, you can't honestly build a case. Like in the absolute fair mm-hmm. income stakes. 
Mm. There's no planet where you can build a case that he should be the left hand side five eight in front of Cody Walker, or yeah. nor Jerome yeah. Law for yeah, that yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, I, I've seen him play. Look, I've seen him sweep to that side quite a bit. He's adept at it. There's, there's no doubt. I, I know what you mean. His role at the Sharks is controlling the whole field. Uh, I think he's clever enough, and he, you know he he hasn't got the the big ego that would would encroach on Nathan's territory. Yeah, true. But I do know what you mean. It's going to be it's a, a big game for a few blokes this weekend coming up. Cody is one, uh, big big one for him. There was mail around that they were considering him, but they didn't go that way. I. You know, if you're not going to put Nico into the starting lineup, then I don't know if you can leave him 14. And it was a, um, I always think sometimes it was almost a pressure decision selection that everyone was talking about. You know, is it going to be, you know, Nico deserves his chance, and they sort of like, okay, we'll throw him in the 14 jersey. But I sort of start to get the feeling now that if you're not going to play him at six, then you're going to have to put someone else at 14. Matty, I'll ask you. It's a big question what I'm asking you, but. But answer this if you're Matthew Johns, not if you're what Brad Fittler should do. It's game two, and for whatever reason, Matty Johns has got to coach his side up there at Suncorp Stadium, and you must win. And and you're not maybe not as close to the players that Freddie's been over the last four or five years. What are the absolute changes that you would make? Well, that well would make you look, confident winning it. You could have look. There's a couple of things with the, the nuance. Just watching watching. The, the makeup of the team is that sometimes I reckon sometimes you can almost have too many footballers in there if that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah yeah and I reckon like you know last night watching Queensland mate they they were very decisive when they moved the football you know they just they just you know push it to the edge of, but a lot of times watching the game back man their forwards just hit the line so hard and just rolled forward and rolled forward. And a lot of their good stuff just came off the back of that. And watching New South Wales, we were clunky. It reminded me of Penrith at the start of the season, mm. where they weren't quite having the punch, and they were still trying to play a lot of football, and it just pushed the ball sideways. There, there was a bit of that. They've got to, I, I think, just take a step back a little bit. They were so, so focused on their attack that they just forced it too much. I think take a little step back there, play more of a power game. Um, you know, the, it's where where you put Latrell. I, I look. I, I find a place for Cody for sure because you just have a look at like, because the thing about with Cody right, is that Cody has got the ability you know to stand back and organise. But what he's really good is reacting, right? Uh? Yep. So the dummy half scoops and he he goes. That brings Cody into play. And away he goes. And watching Queensland on replay, they Munster, uh, Walsh, uh, DCE, a lot of them were just brilliant at reacting to situations and playing fast. We were always setting up or planning, and it just that's what really affected our that's what really affected our attack. And you know, I think taking a step back with your attack and just pulling things back a little bit then really helps your defence. It lets you, allows you to pour energy into your defence, and that's that, that. I mean, that's the area where you win the football game. I mean, the thing about it is, I just said before about New South Wales, is that all those Queensland players, right, played to their potential. You know, Slater, whatever, whatever he did in the preparation, really got him going. We only had a few guys that did. Yet, with ten minutes to go. You know, we should have won the football game. Yep. That that's the thing about it. That's that's where, you know, the side how how can manifest itself a loss like that is suddenly it doesn't become a football problem where you go, Hey boys, we're gonna tidy this up, right? Oh, let's go. It can start to become a confidence problem. And that's that's the biggest issue. They, if they can go if they can pull themselves back together, head up to Suncorp Stadium confident and desperate, then I think they can get the job done. Mal said something today and you just you know I was going to say, you know, and he was right. Of course, he's right. He's Mal Meninga, <laughs> you know, like, but he said, he said, mate, the, he said the the reason why most of the time it always it always ends up one one in a series. He said, that one side goes into that second game and they got a little bit of a buffer, and of course they want to win, right? They want to win. And he said, where the other side turn up there and they absolutely have to win yes. and he said it's just a tiny little change of dynamic that makes all the difference now Queensland they're home you know at Suncorp Stadium they're so hard to beat there 
But you know they've got a lot of young, they've got a number of young players there, and I just wonder now, you know, having that bit of a buffer can actually be a uh, can be a, a a disadvantage. We're going up there; we just absolutely have to win. And yeah, little you know, I, and I think I, I'm I'm confident they can do it. I don't think we need lots of changes, mass changes, just a bit of a bit of tinkering here and there, and uh, so it's not all doom and gloom. You know, it's but they've just got to make sure they've just get their preparation right. And the most important things you're heading up there and you're confident. Matty, I, I totally agree. I, I'm super confident New South Wales can win. And what I'm about to say, I, I totally welcome you to disagree. Um, I've had this view for about 12 months, and it's not just related to James Tedesco, but it is the case of James Tedesco right now. 27 weeks of asking a player at his age the brutality of them, and he's such an invested player. When you've got somebody at, at club level like a Joey Manu or at origin level like a, when fully fit, Latrell Mitchell or a Tommy Turbo, I'm all in on the hybrid model where, like the West Indian cricket team, they are at their best when they had the four fast bowlers, all different shapes and sizes, and they were coming at you, and it was a different scenario. I just don't know why in this day and age we feel so wedded to have in such a brutal role a player play 80 minutes at the back when you've already got a Joey Manu for the Roosters or you've got a Latrell Mitchell or Tommy Turbo for New South Wales. What do you think about the hybrid model in those scenarios? So the hybrid model, you're saying... I'm uh, saying Teddy, 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 for example, Origin 2, you pick Teddy at fullback who who takes a shine off the ball for 20 minutes oh, and oh, then maybe gotcha. for half an hour, Latrell goes to fullback and Teddy's still a massive asset to you He's playing a left centre. He's a Tesla. That's yeah, what yeah, you call yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, the, the, the question would be, you know, could Teddy... Because he never plays in that, so can yeah. he switch and can he hold his own there? I mean, I it absolutely makes perfect sense to me if you had, like, let's say, for instance, you had Tommy Turbo picked at fullback yep. and you got Latrell left center. It would absolutely make perfect sense to me to be able to do that for sure. The question with Tedesco is, I don't know whether, you know, maybe he could. I don't know. I, I, I've never seen. I've, I don't think I've ever seen Tedesco no. in the front line. That that's the issue. You know, the issue isn't the other blokes. Yeah, the issue is whether Tedesco could do it. But you've seen him a hundred times near the line, get a short ball, crash over and score the try. Anyway, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Matty, morning glory tomorrow. Yourself, Joey, Webby. Uh, we're looking forward to yep. – oh, it's going to be frosty. Uh, <laughs> last time yes. yourself and Joey together. Can't wait for round two tomorrow. Yeah, I'll say – what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the show, and I'll say we've got uh, Sydney Morning Heroes, Andrew Webster, <laughs> Maestro Alex, yeah. we've got the Prince of Penitent Hills, Ben Hogarth, <laughs> yeah. and we've got the eighth immortal, Andrew Johns. <laughs> Told you so. <laughs> <laughs> when, hey, Matt, Matty, when's the last time you blokes have actually had a – like? because you're brothers, and brothers right. have a little wrestle or like proper, but it's gotten a little bit serious. How long ago was it? Oh, a physical. man. Yeah. We, we've had a couple of real solid ones at tra- training. <laughs> I had the real so – probably – it's been a fair while, Phil. Yeah. We, we, we've got into each other a little bit, a bit of push and shove. <laughs> but I reckon, like, serious blows, 1996 was the last one. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, we had had a stink in a pub. He he, he, <laughs> he, jo- he jawed off. I was having, having having a meal at a restaurant. He came past, jawed off, went down to his – with his moron mates down to pick his arms. <laughs> I followed him down there. He came outside and he was, mate, he had a million on, into him by then. So it was the easiest victory, actually. It was the only victory I've ever had. So, yeah, so that was the last time this got really serious. But when Malcolm really first came out from England, the first training session he was there, Joey was in a mood and he was firing balls at my, at my uh, ankles. So I'm just pulling pull his head in. Next minute, we're punching on. And Malcolm's like, oh, no, what's going on here then? Like, Don't worry about it. It's once a week. <laughs> hey, Matty, just before you go, uh, if you had to pinch a Queenslander or a New South Wales to most fit into a John's family Christmas party, who would you take? Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, I lo- Geez, I like Reuben Cotter's style. Yeah. yeah. On the show yeah. Two weeks Very ago. Very cold miner. Just a tough, mate, tough, just a really <laughs> good guy. I like that. And so I tell you what, Horsburgh, mate, oh, with, of oh. course, 
Mate, with Tommy Gilbert being out, looks like being out. I mean, is it, mate, Hors- would be a big chance. And we had him on last week. Then we felt yeah, he's, he's great, what a ter- terrific bloke. Yeah, yeah, he's a terrific. They're bloke. all good blokes, those Queenslanders. Yeah, <laughs> that's the it. problem. It's that's, terrible, mate. I was talking about this before, Matty. Uh, uh, for some reason, the marketing team of Queensland have done a great job. I used to despise every single one of them. Do you I remember? Know. Now there's a couple of I New know. South Wales players I don't like. Like I'm like, oh, I don't like that bloke. Don't yeah. like this bloke. Yeah, it's hard. They're hard to hate, Matty. Yeah, uh, great to chat, are. mate, and. Um, uh, we look forward to chatting with you a little bit later on. Good on you, boys. Good on you, Shook. There Just he is, uh, the great man. I'm telling yeah, you, man. I'm telling you, throw anything at him and he's got a story. He, he's a gun. <laughs> Absolute bona fide gun. 9 a.m. tomorrow, Morning Glory with Matty Johns. Matty's joined by Andrew Johns, Ooh, the return. WrestleMania. And Andrew Webster, Joey's first time since the blow of a fortnight ago. Can't wait for round two. I don't think it's been helped by the loss of New South Wales, but <laughs> you want to be here on SEN. <laughs> yeah. You want to be here at 9am. The run home with Joel and Fletcher today. Phil be in the chair. All thanks to Hyundai Tucson and Anytime Fitness.